You're listening to a message presented at Newmarket Christian Church. We're located at 300 South 3rd Street in Newmarket, Indiana. We meet for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and for worship at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning. If you do not have a church home, we'd love to invite you to join us here at Newmarket Christian Church. And now, a message by Dr. Gary Snowden. I titled this morning's message, Faithful No Matter What. Faithful No Matter What. Now, if you'll recall, last week we took a look at when the southern kingdom was ripped away from its land and taken away to the land of Babylon. Remember that? We were looking at that last week. Today we'd like to see what happened to some of those folks who were ripped away from down in the area of Judah and taken into Babylon into captivity. Just a few of them. We're going to be examining the lives of three individuals called Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But before we do, let's go to God in prayer. God, I just want to say thank you. Man, I just love getting a chance to share your word and meet with your people, sharing your message with folks during the week. What a great life you allow us to live. I'm so thankful for it. As we come before you this day, dear Lord, I get a chance to talk to your people about things inside of your word. I ask that your spirit will empower me, that you will help me to share your word boldly and clearly, rightly dividing its truth. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. These three people, Mishael and Hananiah and Azariah, we know another one, he was Daniel. These guys, they were Israelites who loved and served God with all their hearts. We have come to know these guys, all four of them, through the study of God's Word. We know Daniel pretty much by the name of Daniel. But those other three, we've come to know them by just a little bit different name. Now Daniel, he had a Babylonian name. It was Belshazzar. Uh, we still kind of call him Daniel. But these other guys, you know, uh, Hananiah, he would become known as a guy by the name of Shadrach. You heard that name before? He had his name changed when they hauled him off down there, just like Daniel did. Daniel's still pretty much doing by Daniel, but, but Shadrach, whenever he got that name Shadrach, he, he kind of had that name stick. So, Ken and I became Shadrach, Mishael became Meshach, and Azariah would become Abednego. So, you know those, those things, you know, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, into the fiery furnace they did go. Remember that song? You sing that as kids? Yeah, yeah. Now you, you're, you're pretty sure you've heard of these folks before, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. As kids, we sang the songs, we heard the story about the fiery furnace. From the, the very beginning of their exile, they ended up being tempted again and again to follow the ways of the Babylonians. I mean, the Babylonians were pushing for it. They wanted them to blend right in. They wanted them to pick up the habits and the ways and the traditions and the knowledge of the Babylonians and to live as Babylonians. That's why they transplanted them to that area of Babylon. Now, there was a, a guy in Nebuchadnezzar's court. His name was Aspenaz. He was the chief of Nebuchadnezzar's courts. He was, he was influential in the lives of these men. He would take them aside and he would teach them the Babylonian language. He would teach them the Babylonian culture. He would teach them all there was to know about Babylon. Remember, he even tried to get them to eat the food of Babylon. They said, no, 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 we're going to eat vegetables. But, you know, they ate the vegetables, and they did pretty doggone well on it. So evidently those veggies will do okay. I always heard that you can sure gain weight on vegetables. And I asked one guy, why? Johnny Mitchell. Remember Johnny Mitchell? He said, now, preacher, I heard all my life about all these people going on these bad diets and eating lettuce like the rabbits. 
He says, I'm telling you what, you can get fat on that just like you can on anything else. If you don't believe it, look at a cow sometimes. They eat grass all day, and look how big they get. So, yeah, if you think about it, that's probably true. But the vegetables do have a lot of nutrients inside of them. They can make a difference, but I don't think i got that many stomachs to keep breaking it down. Now, that, that might be the difference there. Now, everything was going fine with these three until the people of Babylon tried to make them bow the knee to an idol and worship a god other than Jehovah. It was going pretty good, and then along comes a, this idea of setting up this big old idol. Well, that old idol was set up there in Babylon. They said, there's no way in the world we're going to bow the knee to that idol. We're just not going to do it. And they said, well, if you're going to refuse to bow the knee to that idol, then you're going to get thrown into the fiery furnace. You all heard the story before. We're going to focus on those three friends that this morning that refused to bow the knee and ended up finding themselves facing that fiery furnace. The people that we know as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, what we want to examine this morning is their journey from favoritism because they were really pretty high up in the court. They were being taught all the things in the land. It was going pretty good for them. From their journey of favoritism all the way to the point of near martyrdom as a result of their commitment to Almighty God. In Daniel chapter 3, it tells us about King Nebuchadnezzar's idol. Now, it was a big one. Now, I'm thinking to myself, I wouldn't mind having that much gold. <laughs> that, that, that thing was 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. That's like taller than the church building. Not the church building's wider. Nine feet wide, what's that, about the, the width of that door back there? Is it about nine feet across there? Maybe up and down? Uh, just imagine that, some of the width of that door going straight up in the air, about 90 feet. Shiny as all get out, because it's all covered in glittering gold. You could have probably seen that thing pretty much any place in Babylon. It was one huge structure. And I'm guessing... I'm just guessing, it doesn't say in the text, but I'm guessing it was probably made in the likeness of King Nebuchadnezzar. What do you think? Good possibility? I mean, he's the king. That would seem what would, to be what would normally have happened. Nebuchadnezzar, after setting that idol up, he, he issued a decree that everyone would have to bow down and worship that statue. Whew. Now, I don't know. When, it, when I read what it said about when you're supposed to know to bow down and worship, I was thinking to myself, that would have been some big racket. Now, now think about it. Here's what it said. It says, you need to bow down and worship that, that idol when you hear all these things happening at once. They're just going to all start up horns and flutes and harps and other instruments. You're just all going to start playing at once. Just woohoo! Almost sounds like Mardi Gras, doesn't it? It's just like all these instruments going all these different places. Whenever you hear all that hooting and tooting out there, you got to bow down before that idol wherever you are. You find that thing and, and, and you bow down and I've got news for you. This is not optional. The king decreed it. It's not optional. You're going to do it or you're going to die. That's how important this was to the people there in Babylon. Now everyone in the city was required to bow down. No one was going to be exempt. And a lot of folks took the path of least resistance. I mean, the politically correct thing to do was to bow the knee in front of this idol in order that you don't have to get turned into a crispy critter. That's the politically correct thing to do. And most of the people, they just took the easy route. They went ahead and they bowed down to that idol that had been set up there by King Nebuchadnezzar. They, they just said, it's not worth the effort. It's not worth the fight. I'm just going to bow down and get this over with so they don't fry me. Everyone except Shadrach, Meshach, and... I just make it sure you're with me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refused to bow down, and their offense did not go unnoticed. I mean, it was like red lights flashing. Everybody's looking over at them. What, what's wrong with them? Why aren't they bowing down? They were trying to keep their obedience to God kind of on the quiet just in order that they didn't raise a bunch of ruckus there in Babylon. But I got news for you. There was tattletales back then, just like there are today. Those tattletales, they went running over to King, and they said, King Nebuchadnezzar, I, I just want you to know, now I, I know that I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I just, I thought it would be important for you to know 
that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're not bowing down to your idol. Can't you just picture tattletales coming up, just, just getting into it? Now, that's what's going on. I just thought you ought to know since you're king. What they're really saying is, I'm going to tell you because I might get some reward for tattling. Now, they're tattletales. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were called before the king as a result of the tattletales coming and telling them on them. They're standing there in front of Nebuchadnezzar. And they're given a chance to explain their reason for not bowing down to the idol. And they lay it out pretty clearly. But before they get started, Nebuchadnezzar said, no, wait a minute. Here's the thing. First of all, guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you've been around here for a while. You've been eating at my table. You've been... Shadrach, is it true? Is it true that you won't bow down to my idol? That, that's where he starts. Is it true? Are you reversing? Are you just flat out refusing to serve my God? Is that what's going on here? I mean, are you refusing to bow down before that image that I've set up? Is that what's going on? Their answer, in Snowden paraphrase, yep, it's true. Yep, it's true. Well, Nebuchadnezzar said, I'll tell you what. I know it's true that you haven't been bowing down, but I'm going to give you one last chance. You ever said that to your children? you got one more chance. If you don't get that room cleaned up, you're going to catch it. You ever said that? Am I the only one? Oh, man, we must have did it wrong. We need to learn from these guys. I mean, there's some other way to do this. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar gave them one more chance. He said, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to have them play the horn and the flute and the harp and the lyre and the psaltery and all these other instruments. They're all going to play one more time. And if you boys will bow down and worship my image, then, then good. But I got news for you. If you're going to be stubborn and refuse to bow down to my image, I am going to cast you into that fiery furnace. And it's a humdinger. Now, boys, don't be stupid. You know, that's how we sit down in Kentucky. Now, now, boys, don't be stupid. The smart thing to do is to bow down to that idol because I got news for you, boys. There's not a God in this universe who can deliver you from the flames of my furnace. That's where Nebuchadnezzar was coming from. There's not a God in the universe who can deliver you from the flames of my furnace. That's like saying sick into a bulldog. It's like, God, you can't do it. Isn't that kind of what Nebuchadnezzar is doing to God? God, you can't do it. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they answered. They said to the king, they said, now Nebuchadnezzar, we're not even going to try to explain to you the power of our God today. Now, there's just no way for us to wrap it up in a sentence and give it to you. The God that we serve, he is definitely able to deliver us from that fire furnace. He's able to take us right through the fire. But even if he chooses not to, I've got news for you, Nebuchadnezzar. We're not going to bow down before that idol. We're just not going to do it. There's no way in the world we're going to bow down before that golden image. What a great example of dedication to the one true God. Isn't it? That's a great example of dedication. You might kill me, but I'm not bowing down to that idol. That dedication leads us to our first point this morning. Faithful men will stand up for God no matter what. Did you get that? Faithful men will stand up for God no matter what. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were facing what seemed to be certain death, but they did not waver. They stood firm in the midst of an overwhelming test, a test of their faith, if you will. Friends, there's going to be times in life when we're faced with things that are going to test our faith, too. I'm guessing that there's probably not going to be a precedent that says either you bow down and worship me or I'm going to throw you into a fiery furnace. I'm guessing that's probably not going to happen. I, I wouldn't promise it because there's some weird stuff going on in politics today. I, so I wouldn't promise it. But, but here's the thing. We're going to be tested in other ways as we go through life. We live in a community, we live in a world, we live in a nation where drugs are a big problem. It will not surprise me if sometime going through life you or your children or your grandchildren are offered drugs. Or maybe they're offered a stash of a friend's playboys. I don't even know if they do those anymore. 
uh, everything has gone digital in this new age, or whatever it is that they're using now. Maybe they're offered an opportunity to, to view that. The devil's always throwing stuff at us. We may be faced with an opportunity to steal something, knowing that no one's ever going to find it out. Could be as small as a pencil from work. Maybe a pair of gloves that really don't belong to you. Take them out of the workplace and take them home because you've got gardening to do. Or maybe that pair of PPE, isn't that what they call personal protective equipment? You know, if they give you the PPE, the, the glasses, and the other things, and you're thinking to yourself, they'll never miss this. I'll take it home, they'll just give me another pair anyway, it'll be all right. Mm. Now you're saying, doggone it, preacher, you're starting to meddle. How would you know that stuff? Because I used to be in charge of the PPE cabinet. I know how many people kept coming back to get more. And I said, you can't be using that many pair of glasses. I just kept going out the door. When temptations come, we have got a choice to make. We can choose to follow God. Or we can choose to chase after the things of this world. Maybe it's something as simple as this. Maybe you're being tempted to make fun of someone less fortunate than yourself. I was afraid to. You know why I was afraid to? Because if my mom and dad found out I was making fun of somebody, I wouldn't have been able to sit down for a week. But I remember one young man in economy grade school that I felt terribly sorry for. His name was Marion. Marion, his parents had left him lay in the crib. One side and the other side. Always on one side and the other. And then as a result of that, his, his head looked like a big egg because just never really picked him up, just lay there in the crib all the time. And they always made fun of Marion, calling him Egghead because of the way his head was shaped. I did not join in that, but I heard what happened to him and I saw what it did to his heart. And I remember it from the other side, being a kid growing up in a junkyard. I remember growing up in that junkyard and they made fun of me. Said, Here's the kid from the junkyard. You got cooties. You got cooties. And then one day, some kids moved into the sawmill and they got the cooties instead of me. I was never so happy in my life that somebody else got those cooties. <laughs> didn't even know what a cootie was, but I knew I didn't want it. But I did know how bad it hurt me when I had cooties, so I wasn't about to yell with those folks that was telling the, the sawmill kids that they had cooties. I wouldn't yell with them, but I wasn't sad that I didn't have cooties anymore. So that's, that's kind of the background there. Sometimes, I tell you, it's tempting to join in with the crowd. And we've got a choice to make. Are we going to follow God? Or are we going to follow the world? Are we going to do what's right? Or are we going to do what's politically correct? What's culturally correct? What everybody around us is doing? Friends, if we are committed believers... I promise you, we'll eventually be challenged to stand up for what we believe in. People are going to test our faith. You can count on it. There were many people in Babylon that just went along with this whole idea of worshiping the idol. They went with the flow because they were too scared to do anything else. Maybe they were scared of what others would say. Maybe they were scared of the fire in the fiery furnace. I think that would probably scare me a little bit. Maybe they just like fitting in. They wanted to be a part of the crowd. In the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to follow the mantra of political correctness. They didn't care what everybody else was doing. What they cared about was what God wanted them to do. And they stuck out like sore thumbs because they stood their ground for God. Friends, we should stick out like sore thumbs because we stand our ground for God. These are the kind of people that you hear stories about. People who are faithful no matter what. These are the kind of people that point men back to God because they're willing to take a stand when nobody else will. And that brings us to our second point this morning. Faithful men point people back to God. When you don't go along with the crowd, sometimes you've got to pay the piper. But when you do pay the piper and you do stand up for God 
and you do point people back to God, in spite of the fact that you might get ridiculed, in spite of the fact that you might get beaten up, in spite of the fact that you might get thrown in jail, in spite of the fact that you may even die, the bottom line is, God may use you to make a huge difference in the lives of millions. In the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they spawned a revolution. They spawned a revolution by standing up firmly for God, being willing to be thrown into the fiery furnace. They spawned a revolution. Here's how it unfolded. They refused to bow down to the idol of Nebuchadnezzar, or at least the idol that he had set up. And Nebuchadnezzar was ticked. He was madder than a wet hen. So he had that furnace heated up seven times hotter than it had ever been. So if you heat that puppy up, you heat that thing up as hot as you can get it, seven times hotter than it's ever been. Because he was really mad. And then he had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tied up and thrown into the furnace. Now here's the thing. The flames were so doggone hot in that furnace that the guards who went to throw them in were literally killed by the heat of the furnace. What I thought was cool, they tied them up, they threw them in, they come back out, they aren't tied up anymore, but they're still not burnt. That's pretty cool. I, there's a lot of things about this story I just think are really neat. Soon after Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the flames, the people here in Nebuchadnezzar cry out. Snowden paraphrase. Here goes. What gives here? What in the world is going on? I threw three men into the fire. Now I got four of them in there. What's going on here? What's up with that? Can you just imagine? Instead of burning up, these guys are in there fire bathing. Can you just picture it? Nebuchadnezzar's looking inside that furnace. He's thinking, there's something amiss here. There's something not right about this. Finally, Nebuchadnezzar calls out to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He says, y'all come back out here now. <laughs> come back out here. I can just picture them walking out of the furnace and walking up to Nebuchadnezzar. And here's the king. I can just picture him reaching out and touching them. I don't feel done. Can you just imagine? Here's the king walking up to these three men that just walk out of the fire furnace and sniffing their clothes, looking at their hair, trying to figure out whether they're charred or not. And whenever it takes a good close look, what he finds out is not a single hair on their head has been singed. Ask my wife about prom. She'll tell you that wasn't the case with me. They didn't even smell like smoke. And I tell you what, burning hair really stinks. They didn't smell like smoke. Friends, this really messed with the king's head. He was all messed up. There was no denying what had happened here. In fact, he negative Nebuchadnezzar he became a believer that day. He says, I can't deny this any longer. The, the bottom line is, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he is really God. So he issued a brand new decree. He told everyone in his kingdom to worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He declared Jehovah to be the one true God in all of the land. So here's what happens when people refuse to follow the crowd. Sometimes God works in a huge way. Sometimes he works so big that it messes with the heads of the people who are doing the persecuting. But sometimes, here's the sad part, and I know you're not going to want to hear it. Sometimes God allows people to die in the fire. A true believer is willing to be obedient no matter what. They know that the most important thing is to always look to God and point others toward Him. These guys knew that God wanted them to be obedient to Him, to stand up for what they believed in, to have faith that God could protect them, to be faithful even if God chose not to. As a result, they were given the opportunity to experience the overwhelming power of God. They were brought safely through the flames. And that leads us to our third point this morning and the final one. Faithful men experience the awesome power of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego realized that God had a choice. They 
told the king that they, they wouldn't bow down to the idol no matter what, but they also told him, our God has the power to deliver. But even if he doesn't, we're not changing our mind. We're going to be faithful. They wouldn't worship any God but Jehovah. For these guys, God showed up that day in a huge way. But friends, miracles are the exception rather than the rule. I know you don't want to hear that. Everybody wants a miracle. I know that. But miracles are the exception rather than the rule. God promises to be with us as we pass through the fire. Just like he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He does not promise to put out the fire. He doesn't promise not to let us go through it. If we are truly following God, we have to stand up for what we believe in. We must be obedient. Otherwise, we may, we may miss out on something incredible. We wouldn't have this wonderful story of deliverance had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not chosen to be faithful to the point of death. There may be times when God's choice is to rescue us. We may have the honor, though, of being one of those who die for our faith as a martyr of Jesus Christ. I do not know what God has in store for your life and your mind. But I know this. Eternity is ours if we are faithful. Because Jesus lives, I can promise you we can live forever. Not by our might, not by our strength, not by our power, but by the grace of God paid for on the cross of Calvary with the blood of Jesus our Lord. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow no matter what it brings. If you're ready to say to God, God, I'm going to be faithful no matter what, then we encourage you to come this morning as we stand and as we sing our invitation to him, because he lives. You've been listening to a message presented by Dr. Gary Snowden, minister at New Market Christian Church. We would love to have you come join us as we seek to worship God, love one another, and reach out to our neighbors.